Hey what's up guys, I'm Gunix here and welcome back to a brand new video here on the channel. So in today's video I'm going to be doing a Halo Infinite weapons tier list. Yes that's right, a Halo Infinite weapons tier list. Now I've done other Halo tier lists in the past before as well, so if you want to go check them out then be sure to. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've done one where I've ranked the Halo games. And I've also done one as well where I've ranked the Bungie Halo characters, so if you want to go check them out then be sure to. And uh, yeah, so how about now we get into ranking the Halo Infinite weapons. So if you do enjoy, be sure to like, comment and subscribe for more, and let's get right into it. So first up we have the Shock Rifle. Now, the thing about the Shock Rifle is it's a pretty good gun. It's uh, It does pretty good damage. However, it does require a pretty good accuracy to use, and it's not really one that I like to use often just because uh, I can get kills much easier with other weapons. So it's not one of them weapons that I choose as a go-to. Like if I ever see it, I'll be like, oh yeah, shock rifle, I'm going to grab that. Usually if I ever see one, I'll just leave it. So yeah, for me personally, it would have to be down at meh. Now for you guys, I could understand why it's higher, since like I said, it is a pretty powerful gun and stuff, but just based on my opinion on it and, you know, how I like it and how often I use it and stuff, it's down at meh for me. Definitely not down a terrible though, because like I said, it is pretty strong, and uh, if, if it's the only weapon I can use, then I will use it, and I will try to be as good as possible with it, but yeah. So now here we have the Sidekick. Now the Sidekick is a pretty good gun, uh, it's actually one of my favourites in the game, so it's definitely going to go up in one of these two tiers here, if it's good or very good. One thing I like about it is uh, it's pretty straightforward to use. It doesn't have too much recoil. It has a bit, but not too much at all. A very small amount, actually. You know, it doesn't require too much skill to use. It's good for new players. It's also just a really good pistol in general. It's actually one of my favorites out of all the Halo games, just because the way it fires, it looks really, really cool too. I mean, yeah, it looks like a a basic pistol we have here in real life, but you guys get what I mean probably. It just looks cool the way it is. And so yeah, it's going to go in very good for me because uh, I've gotten a lot of kills with the sidekick. It's uh, one of my most used weapons and uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty good. So now we have the assault rifle. Now the assault rifle is definitely go going to go up on the top here as well. Just because, uh, like the sidekick, it is a, it, it's one of the default weapons, it's pretty easy to use, and it's also very easy to get kills with as well. Like, that's the thing, right? Even though you have some of these power weapons here, I find it a lot easier to get kills with the sidekick and assault rifle than I do any of the other guns. That's why I definitely favour them above the rest. Because you don't really need to pick up anything else. Anything else you pick up is usually just for either challenges or just because you might actually use them guns and you might actually like using them because you know this is just my opinion here this is just how I see the guns you guys probably don't really like the sidekick and assault rifle all that often maybe because they are the default guns but I personally just like them also because the assault rifle it's you know the iconic weapon of Halo the most iconic weapon of Halo basically and yeah so really do like it I really like the way it fires it's pretty pretty strong too some people have said it's too strong but yeah, so we're going to be leaving it there. Now we have the Hydra Launcher. Now I've used the Hydra Launcher a couple times in Halo Infinite, especially in Fiesta. And uh, it's not too bad of a gun. In fact, I'm going to put it in all right. Uh, mainly because I do feel like it is a bit weak. I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it's just me. But uh, yeah. I definitely miss the Halo 5 Hydra Launcher, I'm going to be honest. I mean, the Halo Infinite one looks cool. But uh, the way it works is sort of weird, like it just feels weird to use. But it is also pretty good as well, I've gotten a couple kills with it, and I have used it more than the shock rifles, so it's definitely up in alright. Now we have the Ravager. Now the Ravager is a pretty good gun, I actually really like the way that works. And for me personally, it's going to go in, in alright, mainly because uh, it's not one that I use too often. And, uh, you know, there's other weapons I prefer to use. If I ever see the Ravager, it's not one of them weapons I'm going to feel like, oh, yeah, I should grab that. Like, usually I'll grab it if I need to, like, if I don't really have anything else good to use. But, yeah. Now we have the Plasma Pistol. Now, the Halo Infinite Plasma Pistol is probably one of my least favorite weapons in the game, which is why it's going to go at Terrible. 
Now, yeah, sure, it's good for getting rid of shields, but that's pretty much all it's good for now. It's uh, not good for really anything else anymore. It's kind of useless, that's just my opinion on it. So, yeah. Now we have the Bulldog. Now, I actually really like the Bulldog. It's going to go in at good for me. Now, yeah, it's a bit of a short-range weapon. In fact, I find it pretty short-ranged. Or maybe in just a tech preview, it was pretty short-ranged. Uh, I forget now. But when I do use it now, the range feels good. But I remember in the tech preview, could it could have just been me, but I feel like the range in the tech preview was a bit shorter. But yeah, it, it's definitely a good gun to use. It's definitely good to use in close co quarters combat. And uh, it's very fun to use as well, because you can just feel the impact coming off on the enemy. And uh, yeah, it, it's a very good gun. I really like it. And so now we have the energy sword. Now the energy sword's definitely going to go in either good or very good for me. Because even though it's a gun that I don't use often, right, it is still pretty good. And whenever I do get it, I always end up getting a couple kill streaks or something with it. Or killing sprees, I should say. Killing spree or, killing spree or two. But, but yeah, uh, honestly, really good weapon. It's uh, one of my favorites in the game, despite me not using it that much. But it is very, very useful. And when you get your hands on an energy sword, you know that there's going to be some... Uh, some damage done. So now we have the rocket launcher. I really, really like Halo Infinite's rocket launcher. Um, I remember I didn't use it at all in the tech preview, mainly because I was thinking eh, it's not good for these sorts of really small uh, Slayer maps. But no, it actually really is. In fact, I find myself using the rocket launcher all the time whenever I can get my hands on it in like Slayer or something. In Fiesta, I loved using it. And that was actually the first time just recently in that Fiesta event where I really got to use the uh, Halo Infinite rocket launcher, just because, you know, I've sort of avoided it, sort of like some of the upper weapons, but yeah. So the Halo Infinite rocket launcher is definitely going to have to go. It's, it's either good or very good for me. Um, hmm. It's sort of confusing, but I'm going to have to go good. Go good. Now the Cinder Shot. The Cinder Shot is pretty good, but at the same time, it's very unpredictable as well. Like, uh, you know, it's one of them weapons where it fires out these projectiles, right? And then it just bounces off the walls and floor and roof and everything. It just bounces everywhere. And, you know, it, it does do pretty good damage uh, if you can get, like, the right shots and everything. So uh, I'm going to have to put it in... It's either all right or good because I really do like it. It, it does require some skill to use, but that's all right. I do like some of the weapons when they do that. So it's either going to be all right, all right, I'd say. I'd say it's all right. Now we have the Commando. Now the Commando, I know a lot of people have the problems with the Commando, but I myself am actually pretty good at using it, and I've actually made a video on how to use it better if you would like to learn how to use it better. Now the Commando for me personally will have to go in uh, either good or very good, just because, you know, whilst it does have high recoil, which is actually something that will probably bump it down a place for me from very good to good, is a, at least it does really good damage. If you can like aim well with it and you can keep the commando targeted on an enemy, then you will find yourself like having a heyday with kills and stuff. It's pretty fun to use. So I'm going to have to put it, it's either good or very good. Um, I'll put it good, put it good. Now we have the disruptor. Now the disruptor, is it's a decent it's a decent pistol it's uh not too good it it's all right though i've gotten some kills with it it's pretty good so i'm gonna put it in all right now we have the pulse carbine this thing's definitely going in meh and the reason why is because uh you know i i do like the i do like the idea of it it's good in theory to pulse carbine like it fires out just short burst rounds in these little pulses you know that's why it's called the pulse carbine but uh, the thing that I dislike about the Pulse Carbine is just it feels so sluggish to use. And yeah, it's very hard to aim with as well. Whenever you're aiming at an enemy or trying to aim in a way in which you can hit the enemy with the Pulse Carbine because it's so sluggish, it just will hit most... I mean, it will miss most of the time. And yeah. So now we have the Gravity Hammer. Now the Gravity Hammer is uh, pretty, pretty good actually. I really do like it. So the thing I dislike about the Gravity Hammer is how much range it has. It definitely has a lot of range. 
for a melee weapon. I mean, yeah, I, I get the I get that um the gravity hammer should really have a larger radius because you know you see in some of the trailers and stuff or cinematics of brutes using it and it has this really large radius, the gravity hammer, right? But then you play games like Halo Three and oh man, the the radius on it is so tiny. But then in Halo Infinite, it's incredibly large, and whilst that would be really fun in the campaign, it definitely isn't in the multiplayer. But it is definitely still a good weapon to use. It's going to go in good for me. And yeah. So the skewer. Now the skewer is a pretty good gun. It's a one shot kill if you can hit an enemy right. And uh, it's one that I don't use often as well. So it's probably going to go in alright for me. Because you know whilst it is definitely very very powerful. It does also require the accuracy. It's a hit or miss weapon. So you've got like a... Got to make sure you have good aim. It definitely does require skill to use, which is pretty good. I do like it when weapons do require skill, but yeah. And now we have the Needler. So the Needler is one of my favorite weapons in Halo Infinite for sure. It's probably going to have to go in very good, in fact. Just because whenever I pick it up, you know, just the way it feels when firing at enemies is so good. And I always end up getting a lot of kills with it as well. Definitely do love the Needler, so it's going to have to go in up here for sure. Now the Mangler. The Mangler is a really, like, good gun. It reminds me of the Mauler from Halo 3, except stronger, in my opinion. Uh, I really do like the Mangler. I don't use it that often, though, and uh, I'm going I'm to probably have to put it in good. But yeah, the, Ma the Mangler is a really good gun, and yeah. So now we have the Battle Rifle. The Battle Rifle for me is definitely going to have to go in very good. And the reason for it is just because uh, it, it's one of the classic Halo weapons. It's very good and easy to use. Like I find the Battle Rifle, right, despite it being more of a precision weapon, it's definitely a lot easier to use than a lot of the other weapons in the games. Like uh, I find it very hard, in fact, not to get a headshot with the Battle Rifle. Like even if I'm not trying to get a headshot with the Battle Rifle, I'll still get a headshot. That's how easy it is to use. But yeah, so I really do like the Battle Rifle, get a lot of kills with it, and it's one of my guns that I always go to as well, you know, it's like the Needler. Anything that's in the very good section is always a weapon that I'll just go for if I see it. And then in the good section, something that I might go for, and yeah. So now we have the Sentinel Beam. Now the Sentinel Beam, I really do like the Halo Infinite Sentinel Beam. It does work pretty well, I'll definitely have to put it in good... Now, I've never really been one for Sentinel Beams, honestly, in the older Halo games, but I guess that's just because I found them pretty useless. But when it comes to Halo Infinite, it's definitely uh, fun to use, that's for sure. Now we have the Stalker Rifle. I really like this. It actually, uh, it, you know, it's sort of like a Covenant Sniper Rifle, but it's definitely a lot easier to use. It's got a faster fire rate than a normal Sniper Rifle that the UNSC uses, and uh, also it's just... A lot easier to use I guess because it uh, doesn't have as much recoil or whatever. It has a faster fire rate so you're able to just fire at enemies quicker. It sort of reminds me of a Covenant Carbine in a way. It's sort of like a Carbine Rifle, just a normal Carbine Rifle from Halo 3 or something. But yeah, I really do like it. It's not one that I use often though, mainly because I don't get the chance to use it often. But it definitely does go in my good tier, that's for sure. Now we have the Sniper Rifle. Now I'm not one to really use the S7 Sniper Rifle in Halo Infinite. Reason being is just because I'm not that good at it. In fact, I find myself better at no scoping than actually scoping in. Just because I feel like I have more maneuverability whilst not scoping. But um, it's definitely going to have to go in either alright or met for me. Just because it's not one that I use often, and you know, whilst it is definitely powerful, and uh, most people who do use the sniper rifle do very, very, very well with it, it's just not a weapon that I use often, and so it's definitely going to have to go in meh. Just because I don't use it often, actually, wait, no, I'll go in alright. Actually, nah, meh. <laughs> yeah, meh. Not really one that I use often, so yeah. And now, last but not least, finally the last weapon is the Heat Wave. I really like the Heat Wave, I like the two different firing modes on it, basically have these two different firing modes, a few of the weapons actually have this, and so um, there's one where it just like fires out the bullets in just like this horizontal row, and then there's one where it does it more vertically, and I really like the way the heat wave works, it's uh, pretty fun to use, and it's definitely a weapon that I do go for often as well, which is why it's going to have to go into my good tier, and yeah.
So yeah, this here, guys, is my Halo Infinite Weapons tier list. Uh, do you agree with this or do you disagree with this? Be sure to let me know down in the comments below what your tier list is. I would really like to hear. And so yeah, uh, what's your tier list? Like I said, be sure to let me know down in the comments below. And if you did enjoy as well, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye-bye.